Lilith was Adam's first wife, right? All right, let's get into the Lilith lore. So let me just preface this by saying, from everything that I've read about Lilith and everything that's been written about her over the years, one thing I've noticed is that what she is, most of all, to all these writers, is a screen for the projection of their misogyny. But that doesn't mean that they didn't indirectly make her a badass, so let's get into it. Now before we dive into the story of her and Adam, which doesn't really appear until like the 8th century AD, the term Lilith or Lilith or Lilithu is considered in its original form to be Akkadian. It shows up on Sumerian amulet and it seems to be referring to a class of demons. Now later on in the Old Testament or Hebrew Bible, we get one mention of Lilith in Isaiah. Same place we see Lucifer, funny enough. Also the one time. And it's more often than not translated into night demon, night bird, screech owl, night hag, night monster. Then we see Lilith again around the 4th century in the Sassanid Empire. She appears on these incantation bowls written primarily in a Jewish Babylonian Aramaic. And these Liliths are both male and female. And the prayers on the bowls are meant to cast them away to keep them from making children sick. Thou Lilith's male and female hag and ghoul, I adjure you by the strong one of Abraham, by the rock of Isaac, by the Shaddai of Jacob, by the Yash. Get the idea. A couple hundred years later, we get the Alphabetta de Ben Sira. This is where we get the story of Adam and Eve and the story of Lilith's rebellion against Adam. Now what this story does is build on the plot holes of the creation of man in Genesis. Because in the Old Testament, before they describe the creation of Eve by way of Adam's side, in Genesis 2.2.2, 2, 2, 2, we're told that God created man and that he created them, both male and female. And over the years, this probably sparked a lot of theory about a first wife for Adam. But we don't get this full-fledged story until the 8th century. So let's get into it. Our story begins by digressing from the traditional Genesis 2.18, when God says that it is not good for man to be alone. So he created a woman for Adam out of the earth, and he called her Lilith. But Adam and Lilith started fighting immediately, basically because Lilith wanted to be a top. And Adam, being uncomfortable in his sexuality and masculinity, was not having it. So he was like, know your place, woman. It's the bottom. I'm the superior one here. And she was like, excuse me, we're equals. Same earth that made you, made me. And they just kept bickering back and forth like this until she flew away. And God responds to this by sending three angels after her to essentially threaten her that if she doesn't come back, a hundred of her children are going to die every year. Yeah, she didn't take that bait. Instead, she was like, I don't care, I'll kill them myself. You know what? I'm just going to make it my mission to make children sick, in general. Let the people know if they want to be safe, they can write your names on amulets or whatever and I'll stay away. Later on, Lilith goes on to couple with Samael, which we can talk about in another video if you want. But after this, more stories start to develop about Lilith, like in the Zohar. She essentially gets more and more demonic over time. But if you ask me, the real point of this story is to justify the subordinates of Eve. Because look what happens when you make women equal. 